Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel is for you. So what I've got on the workbench this week is a brake controller. And this is the Primus IQ by Taconcha. And these guys aren't a sponsor of the channel or, or anything. I just, I happen to really like this brake controller on my Tacoma. So if you are, side note, if you are looking for a brake controller for your Tacoma, I'll link this one below, it's great. But what this video is gonna be about is mounting this brake controller in my Toyota Tacoma. So let's actually go over to the, the, the truck and take a look at that. So here we are by my truck, and this is a 2020 Toyota Tacoma. Now this will apply at least as far back as the 2016 Toyota Tacoma. That's the last time there was a major design change. It might work further back than that, but unfortunately I don't have any to test with. So if you try this and it works with uh, a Toyota Tacoma that's older than 2015, let us know down in the comments. Um, but this truck was brand new to me when I got it, and uh, I did need to add a brake controller to it to tow a trailer, to tow a couple of trailers actually. But uh, the, the bracket that Primus, or sorry, the Tacoma gives you with this, um, that's this piece here, and it's just got two holes in it uh, to basically line up with holes that you drill somewhere in the truck to mount this guy. And this truck, again, was brand new to me. I just couldn't stomach the idea of just drilling two holes in the dash somewhere uh, to, you know I'm shooting a video, right? Right, I, I know, I just don't forget to tell them to like and subscribe. Yeah, I'm not gonna forget. Okay, cool. Okay. That's a, you know, that's a closet, I that. right? I knew that. Let's just go in the truck. All right, so here we are in the truck, and it's going to be tough to see in here. I did put a light down in my cup holder to try and help. But again, here's the piece they give you, and there's just no good place to put it. I've seen folks mount their brake controller up here, blocking the vent. I've seen them mount it up here. I have seen in some trucks, uh, you've got like a storage thing here. I've seen folks try and mount them in there, but then it's not quite at the right angle. Um, I've seen folks, a lot of folks actually just appear to just screw it right to, to there. And I guess, you know, to be fair, you wouldn't see those holes um, too much, but this thing's right in the way of your knee then. It's, you're not going to leave it in the truck all the time because you're constantly bumping it, getting in and out. Um, same thing, you know, trying to put it down here or over here. Really, where I landed on, you know, the optimum position for this guy was kind of like right around in this area here. Um, it clears, I know it's hard to tell, but I can move my leg over there in front of it, does not hit. Um, I don't bump it getting in and out of the truck, but how do I possibly get this thing securely mounted down in that spot? Well, let me get actually out of the seat and down a little bit lower and I'll show you what I came up with. Okay, so here we are over on the driver's side of the vehicle underneath the dash. And there's not a whole lot to attach to down here. Again, we kind of ruled out attaching, you know, up here or here because it's, well, it's ugly and uh, it's my, it's going to be in the way of my, my leg getting in and out of the vehicle. Uh, and if we go down further, there's really just nothing to attach to. It's just empty space down here. Uh, this would be sort of the closest place we could go to, but there's a harness here for the TPS reset and it's thin plastic. It's not going to be uh, very supporting. And it's also not in parallel, uh, the, the front edge of it's not parallel with the, the center line of the vehicle. When you put a brake controller in, it can't be like off to an angle one way or the other. You can tilt it up and down, um, but you can't have it like aimed that way or aimed this way. It's because there is a gyroscope in the brake controller um, that takes a look at both, well the gyroscope doesn't, but the brake controller itself reads your input from the pedal and also the input from the gyroscope and the brake controller to determine um, when you're decelerating and make sure it's sending the right amount of energy to the electric brakes on the vehicle you're towing. So whatever solution we come up with has to keep this guy parallel to the center line of the vehicle as well. And if we look underneath here, um, you'll notice that there's this nice metal bracket right here. And mine's empty because normally it houses your onboard diagnostics, your OBD um, socket that you would plug a, like a test device into. Um, or a trouble code reader, uh, normally that would plug into this. I know some insurance companies also require you to have like a little dongle plugged into here. And this, what I'm gonna, be, what I'm gonna talk about in my idea here is not gonna interfere with that. You could still have that plugged in and just hanging. Uh, but I have this unplugged because I'm gonna repurpose this nice metal mount that we already have underneath the dash on this truck to hold the brake controller. And to show you how I'm gonna do that, we gotta go back over to the bench and I'll show you the piece that I designed that is going to utilize this opening. And before we go back over, notice the shape of this opening. 
Um, it's really important that it's got sort of this nice shape here that we can key into because that's what's going to keep this mount nice and rigid. So let's go back over to the bench. Okay, so here we are back at the workbench, and this is the piece that I designed, this along with this uh, threaded uh, knurled piece here. And the way that this works is, if you look at the shape here, this is the piece that keys into that steel um, bracket that holds the onboard diagnostics plug. And you can see the, the texture in the print here showing a little bit of an elevation change because there are quite a few angles on this guy that get this bracket pointing exactly in the direction we want. In fact, I went through more than a dozen iterations of this piece until I was satisfied with the angle and position um, that it put that bracket at for this brake controller. Now, the good news is that this style of mounting bracket is pretty common for these brake controllers and or at least uh, that plus the slight adjustable angle in the mount for the brake controllers means that this should work for a number of other brake controllers as well. But it is sized and uh, designed for this one in specific, the, the Primus IQ. So let's put this together and, uh, and see how it works. Okay, now that that's mounted up, I think you can kind of start to see how this is going to come together. This piece keys up into that steel bracket that comes down and then once it's in place this guy comes from behind that bracket screws in and then the face of that big knurled piece clamps this in place and it is a very solid mounting let me go and get this installed back in the truck and i'll get the brake controller wired back up and i'll show you what i mean so here we are back in the truck and I tried to have the camera someplace that you could actually see me install this, but it's just, it's tight down there. Uh, I need both my hands and I need to get my arms underneath there as well uh, to get it installed. So unfortunately I wasn't able to capture installing it, um, but it is super easy. It's 30 seconds. You're literally just uh, pushing on a little plastic clip to pop out the onboard diagnostic cable, um, lining up that uh, the plastic piece into that keyed area and then uh, screwing in that uh, neural plastic piece into the back. Um, that clamps it in place on that that steel piece and it is a nice secure mounting it's not going anywhere and it is perfectly aligned per perfectly parallel to the center line of the truck um, now from a comfort perspective uh, i'm here here's my foot on the dead pedal and i still have almost three fingers definitely two fingers for sure almost three fingers of clearance to uh to my leg um, and i'm six foot tall uh, and it does not it's not my way getting out with either leg either but yet I can still see it. You know, here I am looking out, you know, at my garage door now, but you know, what would normally be the road. Um, and if I glance down, I can see the display very quickly. I can see what I have the boost setting set to. And without taking my eyes off the road, I can reach down and I can operate the manual override as well, uh, or hit the button to change the boost settings on, on the device. I've seen folks mount these underneath the seats and the glove compartment, all sorts of crazy places to avoid drilling holes in the dash. The problem is then you can't see the thing and nor can you get to the manual override um, on it, which is just not safe um, at all. Uh, hopefully this helps you out. Uh, let's actually go take a look at the design files uh, for this guy and I'll talk to you about where you can get those design files or if you don't have a 3D printer, um, how you can still get one of these. Okay, so here's the design for this, and let's start with the, the shape of this upper section here. This is the part that's designed to key into the shape of that steel bracket, specifically the hole in that bracket that the onboard diagnostic uh, plug uh, gets pushed out from. And uh, that includes these two recesses on either side. That accommodates space for two little fingers that are part of that pressed shape for that steel bracket. Uh, the raised sections here on the plastic piece uh, just help guide this into the hole and, you know, line it up straight, uh, you know, before you, you put the, uh, the knob in to hold it in place. Um, the majority of the design work was really getting the, the position, the rotation, and the angle of this face here and this face down here that the brake controller uh, or the, 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 the bracket for the brake controller attaches to. I went through... 14 different iterations of design before I was happy with the location of the, the bracket for the brake controller relative to uh, the face up here that contacts um, the, uh, the steel bracket. 
Um, and I also designed this that this whole thing can be printed without supports um, and, it, and, and to still get the resolution that you need in the inset here. So you actually print this just from this small face here on the, uh, on the bottom. Um, and then all of these other faces will print just standing up. And that gives us the greatest detail for uh, the threaded section as well as printing these insets up here um, without any supports. So going over to the, the knurled knob, I mean, this one is pretty easy. It's just a very large knurled knob that you can operate with your thumb and forefinger. Um, and then the threads match the, the same pitch and diameter as the, the threaded hole in the, the bracket itself. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you want to make one of these for yourself, uh, check the links in the, the video description. Uh, my site is fpfdesigns.com. The files to download to print this yourself will be available there completely free of charge. Um, to print one for yourself. The license does prohibit them from um, being printed and sold. Um, but I have had lots of folks reach out to me and say, hey, uh, I love your design, but I don't have a 3D printer. How can I get one for myself? And I hear you guys. Um, I will make these available for sale on my site, fpfdesigns.com as well. So again, if you don't have a 3D printer, but you wanna pick one of these up to mount a brake controller in your vehicle, um, just check that site out and, uh, and you can pick one up there. Uh, thanks for tuning in guys. If, uh, if this helped you out either, you know, directly because you were able to print this and use it in your vehicle or it inspired uh, a design of your own, um, consider giving me a like, consider subscribing to the, the channel. Um, these, uh, it takes a while to put these together. Uh, and, uh, I do one every week, every Friday. So if you're, again, if you're into 3D design, if you're into solving practical real world problems, um, with design and 3D printing. I put out a new video every week, uh, usually 5 to 15 minutes long, and uh, I focus on a design that I came up with to solve uh, a real problem. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, take care, and I will catch you next Friday.